Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Inside Detroit's TCF Center, a tense situation as poll workers try to finish counting ballots while a group of GOP supporters tries to get in and watch. Meanwhile, President Trump sues to try to temporarily stop Michigan's count while Joe Biden calls for every ballot to be counted. Six o'clock is when the Detroit Department of Elections expected to be done counting 178,000 absentee ballots. And here we've arrived at that hour and within just the past couple of hours, CNN and NBC both calling Michigan for Biden and President Trump called Michigan for himself, sort of. Here's a look at the numbers, though. Let's start with that. Uh, and as you can see, this is with 97% of the vote in. Uh, Joe Biden with 50% of the vote to Donald Trump, 49%. So a razor-thin margin, uh, but quite a, quite a much bigger margin than we saw when Donald Trump defeated Hillary Clinton here four years ago. Yeah, and about an hour or so ago, the president tweeted this, claiming wins in several states and saying, quote, additionally, we hereby claim the state of Michigan if in fact there was a large number of secretly dumped ballots as has been widely reported end quote we've got team coverage of michigan's ballot count as it continues mara mcdonald has more on the legal challenge from the trump campaign let's start though with hank winchester live at the tcf center where a flood of people showed up this afternoon suddenly uh, wanting to watch the rest of the ballot counting hank and that has led to some tension uh, Devin, uh, really just a wild day here at the TCF Center. That's the only way you can describe it. Uh, tense at times. Uh, police working to control the situation and the crowds, which they did very effectively. To take a live look over my shoulder, you can see that is the room where the county continues. And there are some people on the other side of the glass uh, representing both the Republican side and Democratic side of this battle, uh, wanting to oversee the process as it moves forward. The Secretary of State saying it does continue right now. The county continues, and she says it is legal. And fair. Stop the count! Stop the count! Tensions mounting inside the TCF Center, just outside where thousands of ballots are being counted. Get up off the door. Democratic and Republican insiders want in. They want to oversee the process. When you walk in, they ask us to check in and they ask what party you're with. And then as soon as you see, say GOP, they say, sorry, we're at capacity with both parties. Under the rules, you can count votes as long as they came in on election day. You can count them after election day. In Detroit, more than 165,000 absentee ballots needed to be counted. That process got underway yesterday. We're told about 10,000 remain. We're also told the county continues in Flint. Kalamazoo and the city of Grand Rapids. Here's Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. And so right now throughout the state of Michigan, a lot of that's still happening. And I want to more than anything just respect their work and stand back and let them do their jobs so that we can all be confident when we get the results from those from those absentee counting boards that they're accurate and they're a reflection of a lot of hard work. But just also know that we are working as efficiently as possible within the confines of our current law. Back out here live. So the county continues here at TCF, and I know some of you are frustrated. You want these numbers. You want this over with. But here's the reality. You may remember just a few days ago the Secretary of State telling us that she may not be able to certify this until Friday. A lot of progress has been made, and it appears that we're going to get those numbers much sooner than then. We're live here tonight at TCF. Hank Winchester, back to you. Okay, Hank, and now to the Trump campaign's attempt to halt Michigan's counting of ballots. They're doing so via a lawsuit in the Michigan Court of Claims, and that may just be the start of the legal battles. Yeah, Mara McDonald, also live at TCF right now uh, in downtown. Mara, this suit is focused on the count that is happening behind you. It, well, Devin, here's the thing about this lawsuit. It doesn't specify where the Trump campaign believes there are counting issues. Now, all of that said, all the lawyers are down here at TCF. What the Trump suit is asking for is the counting of absentee ballots to stop immediately. The allegation is that they are not being given what is called meaningful access to how these absentee counts are being conducted. And the campaign wants the count to stop and election inspectors to be in place at each absentee counting board. The lawsuit does not specify where the campaign is finding these issues. But the focus is clearly on the TCF Center in Detroit, and it's not just the Trump campaign that is questioning the process here, but the James campaign as well. There is a process that has irregularities, and we're reviewing our options. 
Back here live. So as it stands right now, the counting of absentee ballots continues. It is unclear whether the Michigan Court of Claims is going to give the Trump campaign an expedited hearing of their lawsuit. But if I was betting, I don't think this is the last legal challenge we're going to see filed in the next two or three days. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Before. What's going on? Okay, Mara, thank you. And now a bit of background on the process. Ever since the counting began yesterday at the TCF Center, it's all been observed by election challengers, like uh, this woman who is wearing a tag indicating she's there to ensure fair counting and, if needed, formally challenge any given ballot. Election challengers are appointed by the political parties and an equal amount from each party are allowed inside. Challengers are different from poll watchers or observers who are members of the public who are allowed uh, inside merely to observe. Now, the presidential race itself remains very much unresolved at this hour. As we take a look at the electoral map, you see Joe Biden leading President Trump now 263 to 211. That 263 jumping up from where we were a short time ago because now the Associated Press, around which many of these electoral maps are built, the Associated Press has joined those who have put Michigan into the Joe Biden column. So now seven electoral votes shy, uh, but the, the Associated Press, though, also says he has won uh, Wisconsin, as you can see on the map. Now, as expected, yesterday's in-person voting leaned toward President Trump. Those who showed up at the polls, the mail-in ballots still being counted, have been trending more for Joe Biden. This afternoon, the former vice president says he's confident he will win the election based on current trends. After a long night of counting, it's clear that we're winning enough states to reach 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. Meanwhile, President Trump tweeted within the last hour that he's claiming victory in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, and yes, Michigan. And this comes after he tried to claim victory overnight, even though millions of valid votes still needed to be counted. We were getting ready for a big celebration. We, we were winning everything, and all of a sudden it was just called off. The results tonight have been phenomenal. And we are getting ready. I mean, literally, we were just all set to get outside and just celebrate something that was so beautiful. And of course, there's a, a lot more than just the White House at stake in this election. Let's bring Grant Herms back in now with a breakdown of that big uh, Gary Peters, John James Senate race and some others. Grant. Oh, there are a lot of races we're watching that are outside of the presidential race, including that race in the Senate. We want to swing through the House quick first before we get to that. So starting here in District 8, Representative Alyssa Slotkin winning re-election there, mostly on the back of Ingham County Democrats. To the northeast there, House District 10. We're going to give that to political newcomer Lisa McLean, who won a tough primary. On the other side of the state, this District 3 here, Peter Meyer holds a substantial lead, but election workers are saying slow counting and the amount of white in candidates are slowing things down in Grand Rapids. And then the fight in the 11. That's going to be an interesting one. Representative Haley Stevens really trying to hold on to that seat. That district includes parts of Wayne and Oakland counties. Oakland says their count, their count is finished, and Stevens is hoping those late counted likely Democratic absentee ballots from Wayne County are going to make the difference here. And finally, this race here that we have all been watching, not the presidential race. Let's see if I can skip through here to get to our Senate race. There it was. So this is the count right now. Peters has actually taken about a 15 thousand vote lead. This comes after the James campaign's general counsel tried to falsely claim victory this afternoon. Now we're still waiting on those later absentee votes as well. I do want to point out something though. Antrim County up there. There are no votes right now. You can see that that's this county right here. It's not because nobody's voted. It's because early this morning election officials there became aware of what they think is a software problem with the count that gave Democrats a lead in a reliably red county. So they've stopped reporting until all of that's resolved. That glitch about 5,000 votes. They think it is not enough for James to overcome Peters, though, when everything is said and done. Devin.
three tenths of a percent separating the two razor thin. All right, Grant, a reminder, you can always check click on Detroit.com. We are continually updating the latest election results, and that's from the presidential race all the way down to the local races. It's right there on the home page and also on the politics page and keep it here on local four as Lester Holt and the NBC Nightly News team pick up the ongoing election coverage from a national perspective. That's coming up immediately following this broadcast at 630. Michigan has once again broken its own one day record for coronavirus cases. Today's tally 4,101 new COVID cases confirmed over the past 24 hours. That tragically comes with the loss of 19 more lives here in the state too. The Detroit Lions have placed quarterback Matthew Stafford on what is known as the reserve COVID-19 list. That's the second time that's happened this season. It doesn't mean that uh, Stafford is infected with COVID, only that he is, uh, as they put it, a high risk close contact of someone who did test positive. That person not a member of the team, by the way. Stafford was put on the COVID list back in August. That was a result, though, of a false positive positive test. So Stafford may still play Sunday against the Vikings if he accumulates five straight negative tests. So he'll be tested every day between now and then. A camera rolls as a thief drives a family's livelihood right out of their driveway. The expensive equipment essential to the landscaping business owned by a couple in Taylor. They spoke with local four defender Sean Lay about what was taken and what they're doing to try to get it back. Stop what you're doing for just a moment because the Taylor family really needs you to see this. The only thing left of their entire family business, these two skid marks, because the business was driven right out of their driveway early Monday morning. My heart's dropped. I sunk. <laughs> I, I didn't know really how it to react. Was. I came running outside because I heard it. 2.30 Monday morning, Philip Blackson heard it. He and his wife, Miranda, are sick about it. Stolen right from their driveway, their 2003 Dodge pickup, an equipment trailer on that trailer this couple's family business a pricey skid steer with an expensive forestry mulcher attachment all together with the truck trailer and everything it's about two hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory so it, gone it's, just like that it's gone just like that that's your business that is the it's sole our livelihood business. the business great lakes brush control and with philip booked with jobs he believed his driveway on quiet ziggler street and taylor was the safest place for it so miranda you've turned into kind of a detective we all have i mean we've even had family members go looking yesterday and the day before i mean we've been checking craigslist ebay facebook marketplace uh, surveillance cameras. In fact, the couple found a camera on the corner of Allen Road capturing this guy taking off with everything connected to the couple's family business. We have not slept. We have hardly eaten. We're trying our best to stay positive only because of our little girl. But there's just some things that you can't. You, I mean, you it's got, rough. You've got to get it back. Yeah. you got to get it back, I mean, especially it's... for the fact that it is our livelihood. It's all we do. It's all we talk about everything. Philip tells us he is offering a thousand dollar cash reward to get that piece of equipment back. Call Taylor police if you can or call him directly at his business Great Lakes Brush Control. They need the equipment back right away. We're in Taylor tonight. Sean Lake, local for defenders. All right, Sean. Well, the weather seems OK with taking a back seat to the other big stories, but let's check in with Ben after a lovely fall day. Yes, quiet is good uh, when it comes to this week, especially with weather. We've got temperatures falling to the 50s tonight, but the record highs will be the story potentially later this week. More on that ahead. A shortage of teachers because of COVID sends students from the classrooms back to the kitchen table. I'll explain why.